welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And I got told off yesterday for not wearing my Christmas hat for long enough. So it's back on, however silly it might make me look. Um, anything for the viewers. And uh, yeah, so we're going to continue, not with a Christmas theme to puzzle today, actually. This puzzle has been recommended to me by somebody I trust. And it's interesting for a number of reasons. Different sort of puzzle, not a Sudoku. I don't think I'm revealing any secrets there. It's a 10 by 10 grid with no 3 by 3 divisions and some 20s in it. What is going on? Well, let me explain. Uh, this puzzle is by Jonas Gleim, uh, who's a brilliant, brilliant constructor from Germany. He's a pit fear appeared on the channel many times before. His puzzles are always incredibly popular because, frankly, they are brilliant. Um, and this appeared today, in fact, this puzzle on gmpuzzles.com, which is a, a well, it's a, a website I recommend. It's really um, fantastic for handcrafted puzzle content. So do check it out. I'll put a link under the video. And thirdly, what I, one of the things I like about gmpuzzles.com is that it, for every puzzle, they publish um, suggested times. So there's a grandmaster time, which is basically a time akin to sort of a top 10 in the world type puzzler um, and all the way down to an expert time. Now, the GM times, the grandmaster times for puzzles are on that site tend to be like one minute, you know, 45 seconds, two minutes at the outside. For this puzzle, it's eight minutes, 30 seconds. So this is obviously an absolute beast. Um, the, the expert time, if you are an expert puzzle solver, the suggested time is 30 minutes for this puzzle. So yeah, this one might, this might be a long video. We shall see. Um, before I get started and explain the rules, a couple of things to mention. Obviously, we've been plugging hard our Killer Sudoku app. That is because it's full of absolutely amazing puzzles. And I say that I'm not being arrogant in any way because the puzzles I'm referring to are the puzzles constructed by other people like Fistemafel, like Bastian Valgem. I mean, it, it's just absolutely awesome. So do check it out. It's available on every platform you can think of. Well, most, most platforms you can think of. Android, Steam and Apple. Um, now, also, if you haven't checked it out, do have a look at our Patreon page. Um, there, there's this Sudoku puzzle hunt there, which has been getting enormous plaudits. It's called Tracking the Cryptid. And I didn't think people would have time over Christmas, but clearly people have lots of puzzle time over Christmas because uh, we're, we're about to release the solution video. We may have to delay it a day or two because people seem to be solving it in their masses. So overnight last night we had... Um, how many more successful solvers? Six more successful solvers. So Tyler Hinman. Now that is a puzzle name and a half. Um, if you if you don't know who Tyler is, look up the American Crossword Puzzle Championship and then you will know. Um, David and Nikki Hunter, Matt Scanlon, Paul Kilgus and Peter Zuga all successfully solved the hunt. So very well done to all of you. Fantastic work. Now, let's get on to the rules of Jonas's puzzle. What is going on with this one? We have got to divide the grid into regions and place a number in each cell. So this is a Philomeno variant. The numbers within a region must all be the same and equal to the size of the region. Regions of equal size must not touch orthogonally, but may touch diagonally. A region may contain 0, 1 or more of the given numbers. Now, in addition, it must be possible to shade some regions fully such that two shaded regions or two unshaded regions never touch orthogonally. Wow. Now, one of the things that always amuses me about Philomeno puzzles is when I explain the rules to them, I always think, oh, my goodness, that sounds incredibly complicated for such a simple puzzle. Philomeno is a simple puzzle. And luckily, I have an example of exactly this checkered Philomeno for you on the screen. And that will explain why I think it's a lot more a lot more straightforward than those rules make it sound. So you can see all you have to do is to divide the grid on the left into regions and if you look at this correct solution on the right, you've got, you know, five, this region is of size five and every cell in it contains a five. You can see the three regions of size four never touch each other orthogonally. They touch each other at a point uh, at an, sort of the vertex here, but never touch orthogonally. Uh, the threes are kept apart and obviously the threes are of size three. The ones are kept apart. They're of size one. And then you have this checkerboard condition here, which, oh, how did GM Puzzles put it? They said, um, 
it must allow a two color shading which is a lovely way of describing this so basically once once the four is in the grid you you know that every orthogonally connected region with the four must be the opposite shading so if if you shade the four the cells the the regions orthogonally connected have to be white in this iteration and then uh, so on and so forth so you can see you end up with a with a checkered effect in the sense that no region touches another region of the same color orthogonally it's really a lovely idea and i've never done one of these before i've done philomino puzzles but i've never done a checkered philomino puzzle so i'm going to be learning along with you guys do have a go the way to play click the link under the video i'm not putting a stopwatch on myself because it might be embarrassing with that let's get cracking now where shall we start now i'm tempted to start with normal philomino well I think we should start with one of the ones because uh, by the way we're using different software today because we've got to be, allow ourselves to be able to um, put in uh, put in digits as high as 20 and we can't do that in our software so if you just press tab in the link we've given you it's, it'll switch to an iteration where you can just type 20s into cells like this. Uh, this is Swaroop Google Arms uh, Pemper Fork, absolutely marvellous piece of software for these sorts of puzzles. Um, so what I was thinking was once this one here, obviously this is in a region of size one. So whatever shading I give this region, if I make it, I'll make it orange because I think orange and blue is going to be the preferred way of doing this given for colorblind um, reasons. If we make this orange, we now know that every single connected cell with this one has got to be blue. Um, now, does that matter for this two? This two is, yes, it does matter because in normal philomeno, we wouldn't be able to do this, but in this checkered philomeno, we can. Can this square be blue? Well, the answer is no. Because either then this, well, this blue region you can see is of size three already. So that's not going to work. Because even if we decide this is a separate region to this, two blue regions will therefore connect. If we decide these are all in the same region, it's definitely bigger than size two. So you can't, yeah, you can't put a blue cell here or here. Now, if you can't put a blue cell here or here, two things follow. First, those cells are orange. Secondly, to create a blue region of size two, I've got to go there. And that finishes the blue region of size two. So we could put a load of oranges in. This puzzle's easy. I don't know what anyone's got any trouble with this about. <laughs> Famous last words, and I'm only joking. Um, now, a region of size two here, and the region of orange region of size two above it. So you can see the orange region needs to grow or we'll have, we'll just play, break the normal phenomeno rules. Forget about the checkered phenomeno rules. We'll have two regions of size two connected. So that's orange. Um, right, so now this square has got to be blue because if that's orange, this is most certainly not a, re a region of size four, it's much larger. So that's got to be blue. Um, this orange region's got to get bigger now because it's of size 4 at the moment and it mustn't touch this region which isn't size 4 yet but will be once I finish the puzzle I hope um, but we don't know how it gets bigger this uh, orange 2 region here must also be bigger because otherwise it's touching a region already of size 2 and that's not going to work um, the 20 clue here, surely. Ah, I know a simple thing I can do. This can't be a one cell blue region, because if it is, it's touching a one cell orange region. So it's got to grow. Now, I just don't think this this 20 must be blue, mustn't it? Right. Yeah, because if the 20 is not blue, it would have to come out like this and now this three has an enormous problem because what color are we going to make it we can't make it orange because then it's connected to a 20 that's of size that, that's orange and we can't make it blue because now it's not in a size region of size three made up of blue cells so that is not going to work for us blue 
well, 20 is blue, is what we can see, and 20 has to get out of the little cul-de-sac it's in, so it's going to have to come up here, and now we know that 3 is now orange. I love this puzzle. This is very unusual, but so far it's sort of doable, isn't it? This blue region can't be of size 1, because then it's connected to an orange 1, so that's this square's got to be blue. That finishes the orange. It can only take one more cell. I connect everything orthogonally in blue. Get the 20 out of the hole. Um, this too can't be blue now, or it's con or it's there are four four blues connected, which isn't going to work. So that must be orange. The the blue blue uh, sorry <laughs> the orange too. <laughs> Untangle your tongue, Simon. The orange too can't take that square because that's then. A region of size 4 to state the obvious so that must be blue this orange now now has only one escape route it needs to be bigger than two so it's got to come down here where it can't connect to this orange so it must be that must be blue that fixes this orange which means we surround it with blue again maybe I will beat the 8 minute 30 I feel like I'm doing quite well here um, this is a, a real rarity, actually. So many of the puzzles we do on Cracking the Cryptic are viciously difficult, and I, I very rarely feel like this, I have to say. Now, ah, we can do standard Philomeno on this cell. This can't be orange, because if it's orange, then we're connecting a 20, a 20 blue region with a 20 orange region, and that breaks the standard rules of Philomeno. You can't have two regions of the same size sharing an edge. So that must also be blue. Ah, and therefore we need to keep this blue apart from the four. Because if they connect, we've got two regions of that are the same colour connected. So that's got to be kept apart. The blue's got to stick out now. This orange can't be of size 4, or it's going to connect to this blue region of size 4. I know this blue region isn't yet of size 4, but one day it will grow up to be a big 4 region. Um, so the orange must extend. Uh, uh, well, something I can see here, for example, I don't know what colour the 4 is, but the 4 can never take this square, because if it takes this square, this 4 can't, could never take another square without connecting itself to another region of size 4. So this 4, there's sort of an edge here, so this 4 has to move vertically. Um... Yeah, okay. Well, of the corollary of that is that... Ah, yeah, it's a little trick. A little trick. This square is interesting. Is it possible that this square is not part of this blue 4 region? So if it's not part of the blue 4 region and it's orange, the problem is that we're going to hem this, this orange region in now because you've got to put a blue there. We know this square... We can't go into this square with this 4 because then it's going to connect to this 4, um, obviously. So it has to take that square and now we've got a, an orange 4 and a blue 4 connected, which is no good. So this square must be blue. And now we've got an even bigger problem with this 4. Yeah, well, okay, well, we can view this a few different ways, I think. Obviously this 4, whatever colour it is, can now not come this way or this way anymore. So it now has to go vertically. But the other way of thinking about this is that neither this square nor this square could possibly be blue. Because if they're blue, they must connect to this 4 and they must connect to this 4 as well, which won't work. So those are both orange, which means this must be blue. We know it goes vertically. It could take this square, but it must always take this square. The 2 must be orange now, because it can't be blue. The 2 can't come upwards, or it'll connect to a th uh, another cell, and now it's of size 3, so it must go down. That finishes the, the 2. It finishes the 4. Oh. Ah, yeah, but now I can extend this 4 region one further, 
and stop it being a 4 connected to a 4. This comes out one more, and that finishes it, so we can... <laughs> We can connect it with orange. And we've got a six region there at the top. We've got, is that a five region? Oh no, this this region can still come down one further. Um, let's put the number in to this one, just so that we're, we're not avoiding our responsibilities. These are all fours. Maybe I don't need to do this. This is gonna just get cluttered, isn't it? Um, I'll just leave it there and move on, I think. Um, so, where do we look next? Do we know what the color of this one is? That's probably where I'll look next. If this is blue, it's going to pen this 20 in a bit, isn't it? If this is blue, the 20 will have to Actually, the 20 could still do something like that even, or it could come down into the bottom left of the grid. It, ah, I'll tell you what is a good question. Is this 20 connected to this 20? How many 20s have I got over here? I've got 5, 10, I've got 15, 16, 17, 18. No, ah, ah, that's interesting. So this 20 in the top left corner is a different 20 to this 20. Because if I connect them all up like this, I've now, this region is now of size 21. So, right, I tell you what we should, so do we therefore know that this 20 is the same color as this? Because if this 20 doesn't join up with this, surely we've got too many digits in the grid. How about, this is a 10 by 10? Yeah, 10 by 10 grid. So we've got 100 cells to fill. So if we know this 20 and this 20 are different, so that's 40 cells. If this 20 is different as well, that's 60 cells. Now, let's just check this. If that's 60 cells, there's six there, so that's 66. Four here, that's 70. Two here, 72, 74, 75. 78, 82, this one. Oh, that could be part of the 20, couldn't it? Um, oh no, it, that actually that can't be part of this 20. Because if it's part of it, if this is 20, it's touching another blue 20. So this is a different size but I don't know how big it is. What was I on? 82, I've forgotten. I was on 20, 20, 60, 66, 72, 75, 78, 82. 82, I think, has to have at least five more in it. But let's, let's ignore that for the moment. 82, 84, 86. Those sixes are, well, they're the same region, aren't they? So that's 92, 97. And I've still got seven more there. That's over 100. So this 20 here is connecting to this 20. So it is blue. Um, that was a very long-winded way of proving that. Now, what do we know about how it connects then? Does it... Problem is with this one, I want to do the same thing I did with this one. But of course, I don't know whether this one is blue or orange. Let's just have a look. I'll make it blue, but I'm fully prepared to accept it might be orange. Um, ah, ah, this is important. Ah, this is really clever, actually. It's typical Jonas, this, because this 20... In fact, let's let's do neutral colours, because that's going to be, I think, clearer. I'll use um, green and purple. Right. Now, can this 20 ever go into this square here? And the answer is no, because if it does go into this square here, 
What colour is it? Well, it's obviously got to be green. But if it's green and it's gone into this square, it's, it's taken these cells. And if it takes these cells, it's definitely attached to the green four. Because we know that everything that surrounds the 1 must be a different colour to the 1. So the 20 does not go into this square, whatever colour the 1 is. So the 20, the 20 must go up. And we know, sorry, and I know my 20 is blue. I've already proved that. So the 20 goes up. The 2 is therefore orange. Um, right, well, the, I don't know quite what this 20 does, except that you can see that this, these twos form a gate. So it has, so the blue, the 20 blue, in order to get to these 20s, it can't come over the top here because there's an orange in the way. So it's going to have to come through this gate here made up of this two and this two. Ah, that is beautiful. That is beautiful puzzle setting. Because until this point, we did not know the colour of this two. But now we do know the colour of this two, because this two can't be blue anymore. Why can't it be blue? Well, because how? where are we going to get its second cell from? We can't go there with a blue two, because it'll attach to the blue 20. It attaches to the blue 20. It attaches to what, what this square, remember, is the 20 coming through this gap. I should probably label that up just to make it clear. In fact, let me do that. Um, that is a 20. So we can see that we can't go blue the blue 2 here or here, because it will attach to the blue 20. So this square cannot be blue and must be orange and therefore it can't go up into either of these squares or it'll attach to a too big an area so it must go those must be blue this is now blue uh, because we know that the orange either extends this way or this way in either case this will be orthogonally connected so like a Nurikabi type logic um, Um, right, what does that mean? I think this could still be a one on its own. I'm not sure what this means actually. Do we know anything more about the 20 then now? Or the five, maybe. Is the five forced to be a particular colour? I'm not sure it is, actually. Um, how, do I, how do I figure this out? So I've got, was it 15 I had up here? 15. So it could, I think it could still take this blue. Um... Is it the one and the four, maybe? Uh, so let me think about this. If this is a blue four, ah. That's really clever. I did, did not see that at all. I did not see that at all until I put that in there and thought about it for a moment or two. That is, that's really obvious. That's one of those things that just makes me infuriated with my brain. Because so many people will be watching this video instantly knowing that this, what I've just done there is wrong. But for me, it takes a few seconds to figure it out. Why can't this be blue? The reason is that if this is blue, it's a blue 4, and therefore it must be disconnected from the blue 20 surrounding it, which means those must both be orange. And of course that breaks, because now the 2 has 3 cells in it, which is not going to work. So in fact that's orange, and the moment this is orange, we can, we've can we got a checkerboard, so we can put the blues in there. And now that fixes the blue 2. 
the orange too that's lovely lovely logic and daft Simon um, so that square goes up because the 20 needs to get out it can't remember it can't get out along the bottom in fact the 4 now is going to be a bit forced I think the 4 must take this square we know that the it's a blue 1 now so we surround it with oranges we can't take this square with the 4 or the 4 will become a 5 so the 4 is finished this square must be blue How is this blue going to get out? It can only come through this cell. That fixes the orange too. This puzzle is sensational. This puzzle is sensational. That means this 20 has got to get out. And now I've got an enormous... So how many have I got now? I've got 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Right. Okay. Well, what we can see immediately is we can't, we can't go one further. Or we're attaching this region of 20 to this other region of 20 so that stops this 5 can't be blue so that's orange this 1 uh, means this can't be a 1 orange so that's got to come out um, oh this region at the top is of size 20 and it's only got 15 at the moment so it, it's going to have to take some cells down here to get out it's going to have to take at least these two because if I fill all of those in that's the 20 so it's never getting away without taking those two to come uh, uh, to come over and above the 6 now we know, uh, we know we can't connect this 20 to this 20 so that square must be orange that finishes the 5, which puts a load of blues around the 5. Um, what next? We can... Ah, well now I've bounded this 20. This 20, how many... Was this 18 I had in this? 3, 4, 5, 10, 18. I need two more blues to finish off this 20 and on the right hand side okay so it's going to have to take this square whatever and then it can't take that one because that will make it 21 so it's those two that one I should put in the numbers actually for some of these regions just so that I'm obeying the rules of the puzzle that's a five region there look the 20 regions I think we can see those everything else has got a number in it this one I haven't got a number in um, So I've got 15. Ah, yeah, so you can't... I see what you cannot do. You can't make this square blue. Because if this square's blue, given you know these two are definitely part of the 20, you've now got, you've now got 15 plus 5 is 20, and you've still got to connect. So that's going to make this whole region too big. So this square here has got to be orange. Ah, which bounds the 20 now. The 20 is forced to be that. Therefore, the 6s are both orange. Um, so how do we figure this last bit? Oh, I can see this can't be a region of size 5 because that's going to connect to that one. Oh, this is beautiful. Beautiful finish. This square is not possible to be blue. Because if this is blue, what happens? It's either a size 4, this blue region, which it can't be. It's already a connected to a size 4 region. Or I can grow it exactly one more without breaking my 6. And if I do grow it one more, it's now a size 5 and it's connected to the 5 region, which breaks the phenomeno. And I can't extend it any further because then there aren't 6 cells that can be orange. So all this means this little square is orange. And it can't be a 1 now because it's connected to a, a blue 1. And now it can't be a 2 because it's connected to a blue 2. So that finishes this one off. <laughs> and means we finish off with blues in the, in the bottom left. That puzzle is superb. Absolutely superb. Let's just fill in some of these other regions so that we've got a number in every region. Um, I should really put the numbers in every cell, but I think... It's fairly obvious what's going on, so I'm not going to do that. Um, I loved that. That was sensational. Let me know in the comments how you found it. 
Um, I think given that I did an introduction, I still beat the expert time, even though I was talking through it. But as I say, it's uh, eight and a half minutes would have been a stretch under any situation. Fantastic. Loved it. Let me know in the comments, as I say, and thanks for watching. Back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.